So while wandering around the garden in the last few weeks, I've noticed a lot more of this going on. This is a stem that originally held flowers and all the flowers have fallen off. And along with the flowers falling off went any potential for producing tomatoes. This is a disorder, like so many of the other disorders we talked about in prior episodes, that's caused by environmental stressors. It can happen on other vegetables too, like squash, peppers, beans, maybe a few others, but it's most commonly seen in tomato plants. There's several reasons why it can happen, but the main reason it happens is because of extreme temperatures. And that could be temperatures that are too high or temperatures that are too low. And so tomatoes can, tomato plants can withstand temperatures, extreme temperatures for a short period of time, but it can't handle days and days on end or really, really high temperatures or really, really low temperatures like 114 or, you know, 40 degrees. Um, tomatoes grow best in a temperature range between 70 and 85. And so it's no surprise here in the middle of summer, after about 10 or 12 weeks of temperatures in the 90s and into the hundreds, that we have a lot of this going on. And it's just common for us in our area to accept the fact that we're not going to get a lot of tomato production during the hottest parts of the summer. So what happens during the heat or even during the cold is tomato plants go into survival mode and they push all of their energy into uh, supporting the stems and the leaves so they don't bother to produce flowers. And when they do produce flowers, which they often do, uh, the pollen becomes unviable and so it can't pollinate the female part of the plant and when there's no fertilization the flowers simply fall off along with your potential for tomatoes. There's another reason why it can happen uh, that's very closely related and also happens here and that's humidity, either humidity that's too high or too low. So humidity that's too high causes the pollen to be sticky and clumpy and so it can't again can't pollinate the female part of the flower and in low humidity like we have here, the pollen becomes very powdery and dry and it again becomes unviable and can't pollinate the part of the uh, female part of the flower. So there's a few things you could do besides just waiting out the temperature and some things to consider of course as mentioned in prior episodes is it's really important to choose tomato varieties that are appropriate for your climate. Uh, there's a lots of varieties out there that uh, are more tolerant to heat, as well as varieties that are tolerant to the cold, especially some of the Russian varieties. You could choose to grow cherry tomatoes during the summer because they don't tend to suffer from as many problems as the full-sized size tomatoes do. Another thing you might consider doing is choosing varieties in the heat, for heat uh, that have fewer days to maturity because you can then get a crop of tomatoes before the heat hits. And conversely, the same thing for cold environments. You might choose a variety that has longer days to maturity so that you get through your ch chillier spring and early summer, and when the tomatoes are ready to start producing, you'll have better heat. So the way you figure that out is in seed catalogs and on seed packets, you'll see a reference to the number of days to maturity. So you'll want, um, in a hot environment, you'll want something that's 55, 60, 65 days to maturity. And in a colder environment, you want to have something that's more like 75 to 90 days to maturity. Another thing to always keep in mind is good leaf cover helps, goes a long way to help keeping the flowers cooler so that they don't have some of these problems. Another reason why you might have blossom drop or failure to produce fruit is fertilizing with too much nitrogen. So nitrogen does nothing to support flower growth. It simply supports uh, stem and leaf growth. So if you fertilize with too much nitrogen, you're putting all the energy into the plant itself and not to the production of tomatoes. So when you look at a bag of fertilizer, you'll usually see three numbers. These numbers represent the percentage of these main nutrients um, that are in the bag and everything else is either a micronutrient or inert material. These numbers re represent nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. If this first number, the nitrogen number, is the highest number among these three, this is not the kind of fertilizer you should be fertilizing your tomato plants with or any vegetables with. So uh, either the number should be a balanced number, pretty close to the same, or at least the first number shouldn't be the highest number. Or you could do what I do because I don't want to have to figure it out. I just buy tomato 
fertilizer that's appropriate for the tomatoes. Another reason why you might not be getting fruit set when you do have flowers is you either don't have enough wind in your environment or you don't have enough insects. And while tomatoes are typically self-fertilizing, and if you look really closely at a tomato flower, you'll see that this little pointy area in here contains the, both the female and the male part of the flower, and it's closed off. So they self-fertilize themselves in most cases. In rare cases, there are tomato varieties that have that part of the flower open and the pollen does get out. But again, mostly they're self-pollinating and so they don't need insects in the traditional way. But they do need to have some movement and insects, particularly bees, contribute to the vibration that happens around the flowers and loosens the pollen in order to fertilize the female part of the flower. If you have a problem with this, you can go out and simply shake your plants every day a little bit and try to loosen that pollen up and get your flowers fertilized. Another reason um, would be uh, inadequate water. So as I mentioned in prior episodes, it's important to water regularly and deeply. Otherwise, you're stressing the plant out and when the plant is stressed, it's not gonna produce flowers. Finally, uh, heavy soup, uh, fruit set. I mean, this can happen in all kinds of vegetables and fruit trees. If your plant is, has so many tomatoes on it, it's so heavy, it'll stop producing flowers or simply drop the flowers off because it's trying to support what it can when you have a large load of fruit. So sometimes uh, while you have fruit on it, you'll see flowers dropping off too. So that's pretty much the main reasons why there is some uh, sources that recommend using a hormonal spray on your plants that will help um, with pollination, but university research shows that that doesn't work in hot weather, it only works in cold weather. So again, just going with mother nature is sometimes the easiest thing to do. Uh, eventually your fruit will start producing when the temperatures are right.